Good day, welcome to the spring variety trials here at uh, Barnet Beale uh, in Northumberland. It's part of our trials at uh, Simpsons Malt and McCreef Simpson and Prentice. I'm joined by Paul Huntley, who's our director of seed, and uh, David Cairns, who's our director, technical director uh, of agronomy uh, for MSP. Um, we're just going to take a look through some varieties that we have. Uh, that are on trial, but also some established varieties so we can compare them against each other. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about what it takes to get to the stage um, and a little bit about what's required in growing absolutely amazing malting barley. So this is a spring malting barley variety trial site where we have uh, field scale plots of distilling varieties, um, dual purpose brewing and distilling varieties and purely brewing varieties where we're looking at established market leading uh, commercial varieties at the moment um, alongside new varieties which are coming through the system and we're able to look at them on a field scale and monitor them agronomically through the season and also have a look at them post harvest in our laboratory where they will all undergo micro malt tests so we can also uh, gauge the quality of the, the varieties which is particularly pertinent to the new ones so we can benchmark them against the current standards. So this is purely a, a spring uh, barley site. We don't have winter barleys here. Um, in the UK uh, there's two distinct sort of growing seasons for barley. So we have spring barleys which are typically sown in February, March um, and harvested just coming up to this time of the year, um, August time. We also have winter barleys which are sown in September and which would come to harvest a little earlier than the spring barley, so they would typically be cut towards the end of July. Um, but this is purely uh, spring varieties that we're actually looking at here. So it's a chance for us to compare the new varieties coming through the system with the, the standard varieties, both quality-wise and uh, agronomically uh, in the field. So in the UK we have two systems really uh, of evaluation of varieties running alongside each other. One is uh, the AHDB um, recommended list um, system, which is basically a system based on agronomic merit, in particular yield, but also other agronomic factors such as straw strength, uh, earliness, disease resistance, etc. Um, and varieties undergo a series of trials throughout uh, a number of sites throughout the, uh, the country, um, the whole of the UK, um, and they're evaluated against each other. And the best of them get selected to go onto this recommended list, which is published every, every year. So there's new varieties continually coming through from breeders, through um, uh, national list uh, trial systems, national list one, international list two, and ultimately the best of them appear on the, uh, on the recommended list here. And running alongside that, we have uh, a quality-based evaluation system run under the auspices of the MAGB, um, where varieties are assessed uh, for quality, malting quality. They have to be on the recommended list um, before they can then be entered into the quality trial system with MAGB. So really a variety has to be agronomically robust before it can in turn be progressed through macro scale trials um, which the industry would roll out on, on, on the most promising varieties coming through. Initially the varieties uh, enter into micro malt trials um, and they're assessed on a fairly small scale and the best of those would then be selected to be looked at on a more macro scale um, size trial which would be run through uh, malting such as ourselves and distilling and, and, and brewing partners and ultimately these results are then fed into the malting barley committee which meets twice a year um, I'm a member of that committee and we look at the uh, the results both micro scale uh, trials and macro scale trials and the varieties then become approved or or not approved as the case may be and we end up with a, a document such as this which is as Richard said earlier the stairway to heaven so we've got the varieties on the right here, which are those which have reached full approval um, for either brewing, uh, distilling or both. Um, G is for grain distilling. Then we've got the varieties which are coming through, which are now entering into macro scale trials with maltsters, brewers and, and distillers. They just need to undergo a bit more testing before they can be reach the full approval. And then we've got the feeding into that, we've got provisional year one where uh, 
uh, they're just they haven't yet had the trialing which which it takes to get into provisional too so you can see how many varieties start over here and then gradually the thin down through the agronomy on the recommended list those which fall shy um, agronomically are weeded out and those which are fail to meet the quality criteria are weeded out and gradually as we move from left to right we end up with the fully approved varieties left at the end. Paul was speaking about weeding out there before so I'll come in and talk about the agronomics and that's my bit. We'll get all these varieties that come through the recommended list. Farmers have decided which ones they're going to grow and my job is then we've got to come in no matter what the conditions are like we've got to try and get the best out of these varieties in terms of yield and quality uh, for the maltings. So the UK grows good barley because we've got this maritime climate which is that sort of balanced climate between you know enough moisture and enough sunshine on there. As Paul said the varieties are chosen on uh, on various things yield being the, the driving factor for the, for the grower but also we're looking at disease resistance maturity straw strength everything like that so we advise the growers my job is I'm advising the growers right from the word go of how thick he's going to sow the crop and that depends on the soil type the conditions everything like that time of year that they're sowing and then to get the best nutrition there so we're looking at how much nitrogen we're going to put at it both for yield but also with the quality bit at the back of our mind all the time and then we're looking at trying to maximize or minimize any sort of pressure that's all the variables to take they're going to take away from yield so we look to control any weeds which are going to reduce yield we look to control any diseases that are going to reduce yield um, and we advise the correct programs for that. Every year is different and you know we try and reduce all them variables all the time but the big big driving factor to how crops perform is mother nature and this year probably I talked about the maritime climate we haven't had the best of years on it all but a very very wet winter which then led into a dry spring an extremely dry spring which meant we were possibly later in getting crops in and then and I'm talking about the springs here we didn't get them off to the best start and you can see when we look at the field huge variability and that's down to some of the seeds germinated straight away some of them germinated later and then we did eventually get rain and we've got a lot of secondary tillers in there so we are having to manage these crops very carefully to try and optimize harvest timing uh, we've got the rain in the nick of time and hopefully yield will be okay but I usually quote in this field at six hectares we normally get 35 40 ton of barley off it put it into the maltings you'll get a wagon load of malt off this field we might just be struggling not this this year so Paul's going to run us through a few of the varieties the first one we're going to talk about is golden promise good old favorite there but from my perspective great variety to look after it takes a lot of diseases and everything like that so we've got to be you know a lot kinder to it but given the right conditions and everything like that it does do the job I had a grower yesterday who was cutting GP it was at 1.36 nitrogen and he was yielding seven ton to the hectare. So if we can get that across the board, we'll be very happy. Of course, Golden Promise uh, is a bit of an anomaly in that it isn't in uh, any of the approved lists anymore. Um, Paul, can you tell us a bit about this heritage uh, variety yeah, that is Golden Promise? Golden Promise is about 50 year old and because these lists are based on, on um, on yield and, um, and, and up-to-date um, agronomy. Varieties can fall off them as easily as they can go onto them. They're reviewed every year and um, anything that has fallen off the pace um, comes off the list. So uh, a variety such as Golden Promise, um, because it's 50 year old, uh, it hasn't got the yield potential and typically in a good year we'd maybe expect to bank on about two tonne an acre, David, on, on, yeah, on, on this yeah. variety as opposed to some of these more modern new varieties which we'll look at in a moment. As you can see spread over the field here, they're probably we used to use two and a half tonne as the benchmark, but realistically, a lot of these newer ones, we're getting up to three tonne, David. People are disappointed if they haven't got three three in there, uh, but as the main reasons you said before, that might not be achievable this year, but that's what we are aiming for all the time. A key thing with Golden Promise that the new varieties have not managed to replicate, though, is the earliness of maturity, and I think we can just about detect it here over the field. Yeah. Golden Ver Promise is a very short, stiff variety, but it's also very, very early, and there's no other variety in the field here. None of the other varieties which have been bred since are as early to combine as Golden Promise, Let's and that, that can be an advantage. Let's be fair to say it, this would cut today. The others are still two weeks away. Yeah. So you can see uh, with Golden Promise, I mean, why, you know, why would anyone grow this? Well, a um, few reasons really. I think farmers, uh, a lot of farmers that we work with take great pride in, in growing malting barley, one. Two, uh, Golden Promise is a heritage one, takes a bit more care. Um, 
bit more sort of attention, I suppose, and and therefore you know it, it feels good to grow that and for it to look so fine. Um, and the other thing is we we do pay a uh, a premium for it over the other sort of modern varieties. Um, a field is only so big it doesn't get bigger each year depending on what you grow in it so um, as Paul and David have mentioned um, we pay per ton so we have to put a premium on that um, and and that really sort of uh, makes up for that extra bit of care and attention it might cost a bit more as well to produce it um, and it and it really um, it means it's sort of worth growing for the farmer for sure. we, we do have a very good group of farmers who grow Golden Promise for us, you know, they're, they're, we, we select growers who know are going to meet the spec, who are going to look after it properly. And they, they, like Richard says, they do take a pride in doing it. And, um, you know, an attraction to them is, as we've mentioned, is the earliness of it. But the main thing for them is I think they do like the pride of growing a, a, a barley that's got a destined market for it. It's very true, but it is uh, more costly to grow and it has uh, a less yield potential. Yep. So unless there's an incentive for the ground, for farmer to grow it, i.e. he's paid a higher price, then unfortunately an old variety like this just wouldn't get grown. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, that's what that's what they, they, they evaluate on, the need to have that premium, because it is a riskier crop to grow than what some of the other varieties are, because the spec has got to be the right. So, yeah. and risk that, reward. Yeah, and, and I think as a malt, uh, the, certainly the brewers who use it and keep coming back and using it, um, they've they feel that's more than warranted paying that a little extra. It does something a little different uh, to modern varieties in terms of its interaction with, with other ingredients in beer. Um, it's just a bit different. Um, yeah, love GP. Okay, just as an example of a, a standard in the market at the moment and one of the leading commercial varieties just now, this is the variety RGT Planet. Um, it's a GN producer, so it's a brewing only variety, no in, in interest to the distilling industry. It's a very high yielding variety, it was for a number of years the highest on the list, although it isn't, it isn't now because it's a few years old and a few others have come along and usurped it. Um, but very widely grown, it was 41% of the English seed uh, certifications this year, less in Scotland because it isn't suitable for the distilling industry. Uh, it's more likely to be grown as a feeding barley in Scotland, it was about 8%. Um, but about 35% of the um, spring barley purchased last X Harvest 19 in England was, was RGT Planet. So uh, a widely established variety, it went through all the system several years ago, got onto the recommended list, had the number of trials done with the brewers, got full approval, now completely established in the market and taken a large market share. So this is an example of a variety that has, uh, has succeeded in the market. We'll now have a look at a few that are hoping to succeed coming forward. Okay, so here's another uh, very successful commercial variety at the moment at the top of its game. This is Laureate. Unlike Planet, this is a, a brewing and distilling variety. Um, I meant to add in before that in order to get the approval for a variety, um, it has to undergo two successful malting and brewing trials to be successful, to, to get fully approved for brewing, or two um, successful malting and distilling trials to be successful for uh, distilling. So uh, it, um, it's quite a hard task for these varieties to actually reach full approval, it's not a given. But Laureate has, uh, has got full, full approval, it's a fully recommended variety on the list here with a yield of 104. At the moment it's commanding a massive market share. 50% um, of the seeds sold in Scotland this spring was Laureate, 24% um, in England and the barley purchase is even more impressive. 62% of last harvest was Laureate in Scotland and 38% in England. So you can see 35% planet that we talked about before, 38% Laureate, a huge amount of the English barley purchases are coming from just two varieties. So a very successful variety that's gone right through the whole trialing system and is now in the marketplace um, reaping its rewards for, for the breeder. Very, very, very popular with farmers. I mean, farmers, we, this was the variety that really took over from Concerto and set the yield, set the new yield bar and noticeably in field difference. We were talking about before about the yield of Golden Promise compared to that. That's a Golden Promise here. Look at the size of that. That's a Laureate here. You can see where the yield comes from. So why people want to grow varieties like this. Very much so, David. It's interesting that already, though, we've got Laureate that was, it broke down the, the barriers, Concerto at 97% yield, and in fact, 93% yield, I think, and this one at 104, and already, we're now looking at varieties that are, are on the list at 107. So mm. they don't stay at the top for very long. No. Let's have a look at one of the 107s now. 
So these are two varieties which are currently right at the top of this recommended list at the moment on yield. Um, we've got LG Diablo, um, which is at 107% uh, of control, and we've got SY Tungsten. Both of these um, were potentially um, dual purpose varieties. Diablo is already a fully approved distilling variety. It's still undergoing further trialing for brewing, which it hasn't actually got full approval for yet. That will be decided by the end of the year. Um, and Tungsten is the variety coming along a year behind um, Diablo. This just got full approval onto the recommended list last December. Uh, so a new variety on the list that's just going to undergo macro scale trialing um, for this harvest. And, and indeed Simpsons, we are actually doing a, uh, one of the trials on this, on this variety. In this case, it's a distilling trial, but equally it is a potential brewing variety too. So this one looks quite promising actually, just a name to take away from from today, SY Tungsten, Syngenta variety, same as Laureate, um, has looked quite um, quite impressive all season, David, I would say, with the, the ear size and the, um, the the grain size on it. I think it's, it's, it's perhaps not quite as early as some of the other varieties, but certainly I think um, when you look at the ears alongside some of the other varieties, it's certainly... Um, it's yeah, quite, I've, I've it's got quite, one of the I've got one of the commercial crops that were growing for it, and the grower, you know, in relation to these other varieties, he has noticed that, you know, the tungsten, in his opinion, looks better, and I think mm -hmm. he, I think he's right. It seems to have a lot more vigor yeah. about it. It's produced yeah. a lot more shoots. Uh, so when, we'll see. It, it, it does look it does look thick. Potential. When, yeah, when we look at it compared to other varieties, yeah. it's certainly not the earliest in the field, but yeah. it does seem to have some potential. So um, this will be a, uh, the first year of proper evaluation of of tungsten in the market. There's not a lot of it about at the moment. Um, we have put enough seed in to, to up the, the ante on this one next year if we if we like what they see in trials this year. Okay, so we've had a look at some commercially successful varieties. We've had a look at some varieties which are looking as if they're progressing through the system. Now I'll go right back in time. Here's a couple of new ones which are just coming through. And I was saying before how difficult it can be to progress all the way through the system successfully because they have to be there agronomically to be on the list and they have to be there quality wise to get uh, malting barley approval. So here's two brewing only varieties coming through. They're both GN producers, so no in interest to the uh, distilling market. Um, one is called Skyway and one is called Cadiz. And when we put these trials in uh, back in March, we, didn't, we hadn't had the Malting Barley Committee meeting in May. We didn't know which ones were going to progress from um, the micro malt results. So such as a thin line between success and failure, Skyway appears to have had uh, hot water extract equal or above to the control and it's going to progress further in the system. Um, and we may well have this in the plots again next year. Cadiz unfortunately has fallen short on the quality and it doesn't look as if it's going to progress any further. So we quite probably won't see this one again. So for the breeder who's just put 10 years worth of his life into breeding this variety, <laughs> a, a fleeting appearance in the field, and it doesn't look as if it's going to make it. So kid is what it is. Sorry. Very good. Very good. Yeah. So there we have it. Thank you very much for joining us uh, on our premiere of our first ever digital crop trials. Um, we usually have people coming here every year, farmers, distillers, brewers, it's very popular. Um, you can really see the differences between varieties, particularly, uh, particularly the modern varieties against the Golden Promise. It really does um, help show that point that we were making earlier. Um, it's a beautiful setting. Uh, I've got Bamber Castle and Lindus Farm behind me. Um, it's a wonderful place to come, we can have a look at the varieties, so in future years please do come. Uh, we, we do these every year um, and we can get uh, some fish and chips and a nice pint of cast beer at the barn at Beale here. Um, so thank you once again. I um, hope you found it informative as well. Uh, Paul and David are really our leaders in their field. Um, we do have a division that's absolutely dedicated to agriculture. Uh, so everything from the seed uh, to agronomy advice um, and also buying barley and other combinable crops. Um, so we really have our, our boots on the ground when it comes to farming. Um, so yeah, um, any questions, feel free to email us or, or, uh, or ask us any time and hope to see you here in future where we can do this face to face. So take care. Bye bye.